channel Carly Heart. If you are new here, I'm Carly and this is a channel where I want to make people's days. If you read my bio, I don't even know where I'm pointing at this point. Whatever. I don't, I don't even know. So today, I wanted to start because I'm a little book girly right now. So I'm reading this book for my school project that I have to do in English. So this is going to be my school book and then this is the book that we are going to be reading today. Uh, we might get through, like, three or two chapters. I don't really know. It depends on how long they are. But it's called Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk, I think it is. Lauren Wolk, yeah. Um, uh, I started reading it, like, a really long time ago. I got it at Target. I was probably, like, into chapter, like, 21 or something. And then I just completely stopped because I found a new book series that I really wanted to read. And that's how I got into my little book girly phase. Um, of reading a whole bunch of books at the same time because I just love stories right now and I used to hate books that probably defends some of you all but like I used to hate them very much so yeah um but yeah today we're gonna be reading Echo Mountain and I hope you guys are able to follow along I will try, try to pronounce words the best I can I can't really talk today so I might stutter a little bit if that's okay with you guys um it's probably not a great do to be like reading this to you guys because I am not good at reading but like I can read pretty fast but mess up on a lot of words if that makes sense um and yeah so let's get into it yo chapter one echo mountain the first person I saved was a dog my mother thought he was dead but he was too young to die just born still wet and glossy beautiful really but not breathing Take him away, she said, sliding him into my cupped hands. Her voice was cold. Perhaps that was why it shook a little. But I knew her better than that. Macy curved around her three living pups as they poked blindly toward her milk. Watch me with aching eyes. I could feel how much she hurt, too. What should I do with him? I asked. Bury him far behind the well. Mo my mother turned to tidy the bedding straw. It was as red as Christmas. We all had a hard night, but it had been hardest for the last of the pups. The one in my hands, I curled him close against my chest as if I was two hearts, but only one of them beating, and carried him away from the woodshed into the pale spill of morning light, past the cabin, toward the well, and a grave waiting beyond it. But then I stopped, looked back, and there, on the cabin's board, Grant step, a wooden pail brimming with cold water, waiting to be useful. I didn't know what was about to happen, but a little flicker in my chest flamed at the sight of that water full of green and blue from the tree, the sky overhead, calm, simple. It spoke to me with a voice, louder than my mother's as she stood at the door of the woodshed. Bloody straw bundled in her arms and said, Go on then, Ellie. But I didn't go on. The flicker, the flame, the voice all tugged me toward the bucket. When I plunged, plunged the baby dog deep into the cold, cold water and held him there until I felt him subtly lured and struggle. Ellie, what are you doing? My mother said, dropping the straw and rushing toward me. But she stopped and started, stared when I lifted, lifted the dri dripping, screaming pup and pulled him back against my chest. He's not dead, I say, smiling. Not dead at all, which made my mother smile too, just for a moment. Then he's yours, she said, turning back for the straw. See that you keep, see that you keep him that way. I didn't know if she meant that I should keep him alive or keep my, him mine, but I intended to do both. I sat on the step and dried the pup on my shirt tail, roughing up his silk pelt which made him breathe harder which made me breathe harder too as years of size as if we'd both been starved for air then i took him back to macy who lifted her head and watched as i wed wedged him between the other pups and showed him the treat meant for him when macy laid her head back down again she sighed a two 
The pups all looked mostly the same, dark, perfect. One of them had a white forepaw. Another one was bigger than the rest. Another some col color in his coat. And my boy had some brittle, too. And a white tip to his tail. As if it were a brush, he'd dip in paint. So then I set him apart. But I didn't need a marker. I was sure that I would know him again in an instant. And I was sure that he would know me. I'll have to think of a name for you, I told him as he began to gulp down his new life. And I just did that all through my morning chores. While I pulled winter grass from the potato porch, I decided against Shadow, though he was dark and, and suited him. I thought of Posum, because he didn't really been dead, not really. As I bundled the grass and set it aside for the cows, I considered Boy, which he was, and Beauty, which he also was. As I weeded early spinach come up from autumn seed, I thought about Tipper. For what, for that white tip, as I bundled kindling, kindling, and finally, while I swooped, swapped the wood in the bin by the big kitchen stove, chose quiet. My little brother Samuel said, I like that. As we ate a breakfast of dried blueberries, fry, fire black potatoes, and milk still under warm. It's a heartbeat name. My mother said, A what? A heartbeat name. You know, two parts. Ba boom, ba boom. And I like that. Esther said, Quiet's a dumb name, but she was my big sister and thought everything I did was dumb. He'll wander off somewhere and you'll go yelling, Quiet! at the top of your lungs. She shook her head, Dumb. But I disagreed, though. I did think that quiet was an odd name, which was all which was all right with me. Myself was odd in many ways. I liked other things that were odd, questions worth answering, like the ones that would some soon lead me to star peak, to a boy who could make a knife sing, to a hang named Kate, and the other Elses I came to know during that strange time. Some of them good, some of them bad. All of them tried to get flame that burned more brightly than ever on the day when quiet was born. Chapter 3, Echo Mountain We spent our first spring on Echo Mountain, damp and dirty and tried, tired, as hungry as the animals that crept from their bowers after months of wi winter fasting. Building a cabin was our work, our play, our church and school. The other families helped us with the, hel the harvest part, just as we helped them, but most of it we did ourselves, and so slowly at that time I thought we would never again have a roof over our heads. Samuel was too small to help much, except by making us laugh and love him, which was plenty. Sometimes that was all a person needs to do, be who they are. Esther and my mother worked as hard as they could, their soft town hands ruined, their hair a mess, and they cried at night when they, we lay down to sleep. They seemed to blame the mountain itself for what people had done. Every shrinking storm reminded them of the day my mother had lost her job, the last goodbye to the students she had to come to think of as her own children. Every coyote that howled us awake reminded them of the day my father had closed the shops. His face like a whetstone, everyone too born out for his beautiful clothes, with the ivy he braided through every hem and cuff, and every long gray rain that found its way into our sad tent reminded of them how reminded them of how we had lost our house, sold nearly everything we owned, took took what little was left, and went looking for a way to survive until the world tipped back to wealth. But I didn't blame the mountain. It was, after all, what saved us. For the first few weeks, we lived on a watery soup of beans and salt. We ate rabbit when my father could kill one, but he was slow and clumsy hunter in those early days. And the rabbits of Echo Mountain were fast and clever, so we were far more likely to eat turtle when we could. But neither my mother nor Esther took, ever took to possum, which 
was easy to catch, but greasy and grimy, and tasted like whatever the possum itself had eaten. A hungry possum will eat almost anything, but a hungry person will too. So possum, we ate that possum we had. It was hard, all of it, especially for my mother and my sister, who lived in the brew of the fear and exhaustion, lonely for the life that we left behind. My first spring at the mountain was a kinder season. Kinder season. Like my father, I loved the words, woods, from the start. The two of us were happy with our unmapped life. The consistent brightness of the birds, the moon, beautiful in its bruises, the breeze that set the trees shimmering in the sun, fresh and joyful, and the work we did trip together to build ourselves a home. For every difficulty that had been some kind of good work we could do, so we done it. But this bond with my father in the wilderness itself made a rift between me and my mother, and my sister especially, who both seemed to think I somehow betrayed them by being happy when they were not. Nothing about life on Echo Mountain was harder for me than that rift. The idea that I should be sorry for being different, and I made up my mind early one on that I might miss my mother, miss my sister, and be lonely. But I would not be sorry for what set me apart. I loved the mountain, and I loved what it came, came, came would in me, and that was that. But it wasn't easy. If I needed another person to love where I was, I got one in the morning in May when the whole world hummed and the air was sweet with the first of the eyelac. I found it in the pocket of my jacket, which I hung from a tree and branch forgot and forgotten. My father had made that jacket in his shop before the crash stitched it with spring flowers and carved the buttons from hardwood, made it with plenty of room for me to grow, and I wore it whenever I could, though work and weather and mess. While Esther and my mother kept their theirs packed in brown paper, safe from harm, and scolded me for every new rip and stain. When I plucked my jacket from the branch and slipped it back on, I found it in the pocket and perfectly carved snowdrop spouted from a bulb so fine and delicate that I lifted it to my nose, expecting to get a wolf of meadow. This time, I didn't turn to search the woods around me. This time, I let my eyes look past the carving and into the trees. And there, just as the thicket, the thicket there, a face, framed by leaves, as if it were part plant itself, and then gone. I blinked, looked looked harder. Hello, I called out, but no one answered. So I slipped the snowdrop back in my pocket and spent the rest of the day wondering about that face, those eyes, watching me. After that, I looked more closely at the faces of the others on my mountains, out on that mountainside, peering at them through fully until more than one said, is there something in my teeth or my wife has an old pair of glasses that might suit you? But none of the faces looked like the one I had seen. They were all too old, and none of them had enough loneliness in them. So I went on as before, working hard, learning so much every day that I thought I might pop like corn in a kettle, and watching the woods to see who might be watching me. When the first room was done, we moved out of the tent and into the cabin. I remember it was June, and we were no longer cold except at the very darkest part of night. For me, that was enough. But my mother and Esther made my father put a bolt on the cabin door so they could lock us in each night and sleep, finally in peace. Dry, safe, a thick wall between them in the wilderness. By the time our first mountain winter came, we had a snug, snug, safe home with four good rooms. One for us children, one for our parents, one for our kitchen, and one for everything else. A root cellar that we'd grown the whole summer long. A place where we could start again, the known, lo- the known how to make our way in this new world, and for some of us, the blessing of knowing that we were blessed. But that was before my father's accident changed everything. Okay, guys, so that was all the chapters I'm going to read today of Echo Mountain. This book is actually quite good. If you read the back of it, um, it's awesome. I'll probably type it in the description. Um, cause it's my first video, so everybody's gonna want to know the book about. And maybe you guys can go buy this at your local Target or whatever you can get books, you know? Awesome. So, yeah, thank you so much for listening, plus watching. Uh, when I read, it's kind of boring to just watch the screen, so just listen to it. Or do something when you're, it's like, kind of like a podcast, you know? 
But anyways, uh, thank you for watching, and make sure to like and subscribe and hit that post note button so whenever I post a video, you will see it. Uh, thank you so much. Bye, guys.